everybody knows about tarot decks, and there are hundreds of books and classes to learn how to use them. But oracle decks? They're different. How do you get to know them and make them yours? Today, I'm going to show you how to find your new path to magic. Hi, I'm Corby Mitleid, and this is the Psychic Yellow Brick Road. The world is changing, and life doesn't have the spark it used to. So we look around and ask, where do I need to go to catch the magic again? You've found it. Welcome to the Psychic Yellow Brick Road, a weekly podcast that delves into the intuitive world, metaphysics, life purpose, and how to connect with the compassion of spirituality. I'm Corby Mitleid, and I've been on the Psychic Yellow Brick Road for 50 years. I'm a certified tarot master, past life specialist, psychic medium, channel, and author. And most importantly, I'm an elder in the field, ready to pass on everything I've discovered to you. So let's hit that psychic yellow brick road where you can find the real wizards and avoid the flying monkeys. The magic of oracle decks, how to choose them and how to use them. Next time you go to a psychic fair, take a look at the tools the intuitives are using. You'll see everything from crystals to scrying balls to spirit art to runes, but most readers have tarot cards. It's a fair bet that people outside the metaphysical world have at least seen a deck. Think of movies like Live and Let Die or Practical Magic, even if they haven't used one themselves. Tarot decks have been around for a long time, and there are literally thousands of volumes, courses, and instructors for discovering their ins and outs. But these days, Tarot has to make room on the shelf for its New Age cousins, Oracle Decks. And they are completely different. Whether you're a fan of fairies, dragons, Zen Buddhists, vampires, steampunk, or pretty much anything else, you'll find a special deck designed around your passion that has nothing to do with Tarot rules. And because there's no tradition for Oracle Decks, there's no standard way to read them. So the question is, without someone telling you This is exactly how you do it. How do you dance with your new deck? And how do you choose from the dozens of decks out there? Pull up a chair and grab your teacup, my dears. I'm going to give you four steps to use so that you can flip your new cards with confidence. Number one, listen for who's asking you to dance. Decks are as individual as the people who use them, and one person's favorite deck is another person's flea market leavings. So it's important to recognize what will zing your intuition and encourage you to keep practicing on a daily basis. Before you go shopping for your new divination partner, I want you to close your eyes and imagine the perfect deck. How does it feel in your hand? Is the deck small and compact or large enough for lush illustrations? Are the colors saturated or pastel? Is the deck in color at all? Or do you see black and white? Is the deck designed around traditional artwork, or photographs, or collages? Who's in the deck? Humans, animals, mythical creatures, or something else? Does it have major and minor groupings, or are all the cards standalone? Is the feel of the deck light or dark? Each of these questions will help you find a deck where you can dive deep, and come up with all kinds of interesting stories for the future. Fast forward, you've gone shopping, you've looked and felt and thought and weighed your options, and you've chosen your deck. You've brought it home, broken through the shrink wrap, and lifted the box cover. You'll find your cards, a few introduction and about cards telling you about the designer, the thoughts behind the deck, and a book. Are you ready for a shock? Put the book down and don't open it. So number two is don't read the book first. Make your introductions. Now, mind you, I have nothing against instructional books. I don't. But if you're trying to improve your own ability to dig out meanings and gifts in your deck, reading the book first might stifle your imagination. With tarot decks, it's reasonable to learn the traditional meanings of each card. Years, decades, even centuries of thought have gone into interpretations. But when it's a newly invented deck, without a history, all paths are open, 
and your path can be as individual as you are. I want you to try talking to the cards without the benefit of other people's ideas. Crack open your deck and fan it out. Study the design on the backs. Then turn them over so they all face you, eager to play. Which cards draw you? What groups do you see? Do you want to read the cards in order, as the deck was designed? Or are there other patterns calling you? Think about your deck and its makeup, the way toddlers figure out a new toy. They turn it over, look inside, they shake it to see what sound it makes, maybe even taste it. Be as adventurous and curious as they are. Your particular insights are what will make this deck truly yours. And remember that expert readers know that cards are a world of their own. Each deck is its own domain. So now that you've entered your new neighborhood, let's meet the neighbors. Number three, who lives there? Traditional tarot decks are kind of like 1950s suburbia. But instead of everyone having a front lawn and a picket fence and a station wagon, everyone has major arcana and minor arcana and court cards and four suits. But that's not always the case with oracle decks. So check yours out. Does it have another set of divisions, families or colors or affiliations? Look at the faces in the illustration, human or other, and examine how creatures are placed or how they present themselves. What personalities do you sense in each one? Don't fall into the easy trap of assuming characters are the same as in a tarot deck. Instead, dive in. Find out what's unique about your deck's residents. Divination decks are different. That's what makes them delicious. So here you are in the neighborhood. You've hung out for a little while and said hello. If you're like most people, there will be that certain someone who will turn out to be your best buddy. Let's go pick out your deck's BFF. Number four is find a specific teacher card. Again, break the rules. In traditional tarot, you're usually assigned a significator chord card by your gender, age, and or hair and eye color. But to me, that ignores your preferences, your individuality, or those of the beings in your new deck. Face it. What good is being assigned a card by hair and eye color when your deck is populated with crystals or aliens or a bunch of bald guys with sunglasses? No, I haven't seen that last one yet, but it's probably in the pipeline. Look, instead, I want you to let your energy sink into each card. You'll feel a pull to one card, one image that feels like it really wants to open up your mind and vision. That is your BFF for the deck. Remember, the more energy we give an idea, we bring it into being as a thought form. If there's one image, one being that reaches out to you, sit down with it and see what it has to say. You've now made your new Oracle deck distinctly yours. Enjoy getting to know everybody who lives there. Spend some time exploring your new surroundings and you'll find it's a metaphysical neighborhood where you feel right at home. I've been guiding friends and clients since 1973. I love showing you opportunities and how to grab them, where the tough stuff is and how to get through it, and handing you your toolbox through tarot and oracle cards, past life exploration, spirit guides and angelic conferences, and mediumship. My website, corbymitlai.com, is full of articles, blogs, where to find me for live appearances, and where to listen to me as I guest on other podcasts. There's a full menu of readings, from short burning questions all the way up to the jewel in the crown, my soul plan readings, which are based on the work I did with Robert Schwartz. Whether it's general questions about your life in practical terms, romance readings, business consultations, discovering your sentence of passion, or digging into that single challenge that has run through your life, you can find the appointment that's right for you. You know, your opinion matters a lot. So if you enjoy this, take a few minutes to leave a review. Word of mouth is key with podcasts, so share it with others. And if you really want to help make the magic happen, go find me at patreon.com. There's a tier called I Believe in You. And for just a couple of dollars a month, you can be an official roadie and help all the things I do. The podcast, the books, the classes, the videos keep on coming. 
This has been Corby Mitlod. And until next time, keep those ruby slippers polished, and I'll meet you on the Psychic Yellow Brick Road. <laughs>